Hello, it's ShadeX, and today I'll be talking about a franchise and show that I talked about earlier this year, that being Chucky. In that video, I went over all the mainline movies and the show, so I figured since Chucky had a Christmas episode that came out in November, I figured I'd end the year by talking about the killer doll that I talked about previously. Chucky Season 2 is a decent follow-up to the first one that came before, which I went over briefly in my first video on the franchise. The season had a solid six episodes. These episodes explore the concept of Chucky variants like a brainwashed good Chucky, a Sigma male buff Chucky, and the bald cannibalistic Colonel Chucky who is the leader of them all. The Hackensack trio runs into these killer dolls in a Catholic school that is in the same building where a teen Charles Lee Ray used to live. The second season also featured the return of the fan favorite characters Glenn and Glenda who hadn't appeared since the end of Seed of Chucky. There are also some new faces like Nadine, a kind and carefree student with a habit of stealing who works alongside the main three. I could go on and gush about the whole season, but I'd rather talk about it once I do a full series retrospective. However, since Christmas is around the corner, I decided to go over the eighth episode in season two finale titled Chucky Actually. Christmas is honestly something that the Chucky franchise hasn't fully tackled until this episode. Yes, there was the scene where Chucky and Tiffany killed a guy dressed as Santa and Seed. However, that scene was revealed to be a part of a fictional film called Chucky Goes Psycho. This episode, on the other hand, fully takes place during the holiday season, at least for a majority of it. So, how is the episode? Is it a good Christmas episode? Does it wrap up the storyline of the second season in a nice Christmas present, Bo, and set up a season three or potential movie? Honestly, I'd say so, for the most part. Well, to be fair, the religious school plot ended with episode seven, with a batshit crazy exorcism episode with a legacy Chucky cast and the new cast. The power of Christ compels you. You think I'm scared to go to hell? Fuck that. I'm from Jersey. The episode Chucky actually, on the other hand, follows up the cliffhanger of episode 7, where it's revealed a part of Chucky survived after being shot by Andy Barkley. This is shown with Dr. Mixter laughs like the killer doll. This change is explained in the opening, with Chucky doing the same voodoo switch spell that Tiffany did with Jennifer Tilly and Seed. There are some flashbacks that are shown while Mixter dies in the Chucky doll body, where she remembers the time she spent with Charlie. It turns out, besides being his childhood therapist, she was also his accomplice in season one, which was a great twist. After possessing Dr. Mixter, Chucky transfers his soul to a good guy doll that was conveniently hidden away. Then, throughout the episode, the killer doll plots his revenge against the Hackensack trio by buying the world's quietest chainsaw with his own credit card. A Chucky credit card! A Chucky credit card! Hey, Doug, Doug, get get out of my set, get out of my set, get away from me, Nostalgia Critic. Thank goodness he didn't show up during No Nostalgia Critic November. That, that, that would have been a nightmare. Anyway, this ends up being the looming threat of the episode as the killer doll plans to end the lives of the Hackensack trio on Christmas Eve, which the episode counts down to. There are a lot of things I loved about this episode. Lexi was definitely the character who shined the most in this finale. Jake and Devin's subplot is alright, but honestly, she was the standout character in this one. Lexi in this finale is recovering from her pill addiction, reveals to an addict's anonymous group that a monster caused this addiction. Jake believes she'll reveal it was Chucky who caused this, but then she says it's her mother. Now that the school is gone, Jake and Devin move into Lexi's house. Lexi and Michelle argue because she ends up streaming the fact Jake moved in and was up upset that Devin is now going to live with them too. However, by the end of the episode, Lexi and her mother end up getting along. More on that later, but next I want to talk about what Jake and Devin do this episode. Jake and Devin's subplot honestly is the weakest part of the episode. It follows the same, I have no clue what Christmas present to give my significant other trope. It's not a bad subplot by any means, but Lexi got away better 
better story in this finale. I did chuckle at the scene where Devin reveals he isn't a podcaster anymore. He's right, that is so season one. But yeah, this subplot was one of the weaker parts of this episode. However, the most standout moment with Jake, Devin, and Lexi is where they mention Andy and Kyle and if their lives will be ruined by Chucky just like them. Are we gonna be like them when we grow up? Who? Andy and Kyle. No jobs, no wives, just complete obsession with all things Chucky. That is a terrifying thought. The best part of this episode, honestly for me, was the scene where Glenn and Glenda go into the Glendall. I honestly will miss Lachlan Watson since they played both characters very well. I like seeing the two non-binary siblings all throughout the season. They both have dreams about being the doll in Seed and always text each other. I really love their arc this season. It comes to a close when Nika attempts to shoot Tiffany in episode 7 and accidentally shoots Glenn. I love seeing Lachlan's last moment moments as Glenda in this finale. They end up burning a man alive with a defibrillator, so they don't have a witness to the soul transfer. Glenda was a very interesting character this season with them being a murderer but still having good in them. Anyway, in order for both to survive, Glenn and Glenda transfer their souls into the doll. Glenn, now a doll, voiced by Billy Boyd again, needs a new name to illustrate their change. They decide on the name Gigi. Honestly, it makes a lot of sense for the two to go back into the doll. After all, Gigi really didn't have a say in their soul being split with it being Chucky and Tiffany's decision. It could be argued that their parents pushing the boy and girl genders on them led to the split personality of Glenn and Glenda. Gigi overall is a person with multiple traits. They are non-binary, have feminine and masculine traits. They are for the most part kind-hearted, but they occasionally kill. Tiffany wants to spend time with Gigi, but they decide to go back to the United Kingdom to discover their roots. Anyway, the end of this finale is crazy. Chucky goes down the chimney to deliver murder instead of toys. Tiffany breaks into the Cross household around the same time. Tiffany asks Michelle for the bell doll and then witnesses Chucky cut her in half with the chainsaw. It's honestly really nice to see the two killer exes together on screen again and it's interesting seeing them as enemies rather than allies like they were in the previous movies and the start of the first season. Chucky plans on killing Tiffany and finding Gigi who is next on his murder list. However, after seeing the former couple's argument and seeing her dead mom, Lexi knocks a doll over and saw Chucky to death. I am glad she got a badass heroic moment as a horror protagonist. Prior to his death, Chucky alludes to the fact that he is the last doll and begs Tiffany to save him. Listen to me. I'm the last Chucky standing. If I die this time, I die for good. Oh dear. So sad. Oh, Tiff, Tiff. I honestly thought Chucky died for good in this episode, since the focus switches to Tiffany after his demise. At first it appears Tiffany gets defeated with Jake and Devin stabbing her. It's crazy how they just go and attack her. They've clearly toughened up since they dealt with Chucky. However, there's a twist at the end where Carolyn defends Tiffany and leaves with her, who she believes is her true mom since Chucky brainwashed her. If I had a nickel for every time I watch a season finale in 2022 where a kid joins forces with the series' villain, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird it happened twice, right? I like the end, despite it being dark, where Lexi notes on how she is now an orphan like Jake and Devin. The Hackensack trio ends up getting the police involved, who plan to track down Tiffany. Oh yeah, and Mrs. Fairchild, the teacher from season one, returns, who is now their parental guardian. They bring up Chucky to her, and she seems to believe them. We then get a set up for season two, which will take place in New York. Tiffany now lives in an apartment with Carolyn. Nika reveals to Tiffany her desire to kill her. I find it funny that despite shooting Glenn in episode seven, she is still friends with Gigi who talks to her daily unlike their own mother. The episode ends with Tiffany trying to put her soul in the bell doll. However, it turns out to be Chucky in disguise. He then lunges at her ready to kill and the episode is about to come to a close. I was worried at first in this episode that the killer doll
Doll wouldn't return and that this would be a Tiffany show. However, thankfully, Chucky comes back. He always comes back. The episode ends with Chucky singing the show's kill count to the tune of 12 Days of Christmas. I found that hilarious. First day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Liv Morgan killed on live TV. <laughs> On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me one strangulation and Liv Morgan killed on live TV. Overall, I really love the season finale of Chucky. Was it perfect? Not necessarily, but I still enjoyed it. Honestly, with it being clear that Chucky is running out of good guy dolls to possess, I hope season 3 is the end for him. I'd be fine with a movie after a third season too. What I want most from a season 3 is for Chucky to find a way to survive being killed. In this episode and the one prior, it's explained that he's running out of dolls. I am honestly tired of the... Actually, this is the last good guy doll reveal that happened three times this season. Chucky at some point really needs to die. He's clearly grown weaker after the Colonel decided to kill his doll army. An army of Chucky's is a threat, but just one doll can easily be killed. The only way I see the Ginger Joel surviving is if he can get Carolyn to kill for him, which would give him a power boost just like Junior did in Season 1. While Season 2 isn't as good as the first, I really wanted Season 3 to happen, which seems seems to have been renewed based on a leak on Rotten Tomatoes. Also, seeing that next year Chucky will get a haunted house for Universal Halloween Horror Nights, the show is very likely to continue. I am glad Chucky got to do a Christmas special finally. I am shocked this never happened before since he's a toy which fits the theme of that holiday. Anyway, this has been Shade X and I hope you all feel nothing but good vibes. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,